this is uh, Ministry Minutes. We're starting back up um, here with Luis. And we are just over the halfway mark for Lent. So we chose to talk about um, our own Lenten journey. Um, we're doing a Lenten check-in. We want to know um, where you guys are at, how you guys are doing with um, whatever you chose to either give up or take on. And we're going to talk a little bit about that um, yeah. shortly. So I guess I'll go ahead and go first. Um, this year for Lent, I actually didn't uh, give anything up. I chose to take something on. And um, so what I chose to take on was reading. I've been talking a lot about wanting to get back mm -hmm. into like reading again, and I just don't make the time for it. So that was going to be my, like part of my Lenten journey. And I was doing really, really well up until about a week ago. Um, we had, if you can hear the thunder, like in the background, we've been having a lot of storms. So last week, you know, we got sent home um, just because of all the flooding that's been happening here in Three Rivers. Uh, and then I also ended up getting sick. I had COVID, <clears throat> which, yeah, it was terrible. It wasn't that bad, thankfully, but, um, and so, like, this last week, I actually haven't read, like, at all, which wow. I'm, like, really bummed. Like, I want to get back into the swing, but it's hard, you know? I mean, I, sure. 40 days is a long time, and I, I think that we, we realize that, but, like, we don't think about the things that accompany that, you know? Yeah. Like, keeping with that routine and everything, and, you know, when you have disruptions to your routine, it's easy to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's definitely what happened with me, so my goal is to actually start... Um, again tonight uh, and hope that I can keep going and like, okay. you know re, yeah. re like commit myself to uh, what I chose to do for Lent so how about you Luis? Yeah so you know one of the things that I chose to give up was soda and I think it's just um, one of those things that for me was hard because here at work we have packets of soda and it was an everyday thing get your soda for lunch and so for me, it's been really hard. I've already failed like twice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. Yeah. But it's been a challenge. So I think, and it, it's actually difficult, which is why for me was a good idea because it's something that's actually forced me to work to, to achieve this. Um, so I did pick up something though. I did pick up reading as well. Um, but like Sam, <laughs> um, I have kind of been slacking a little bit because, so like she mentioned, there was, um, we couldn't come up to work last week and I left my book in the office. And now that we're back, I have not touched the book. I was doing really well up until last week and I left the book here in my office. So that was unfortunate, but um, I think, you know, it's, it's hard. Like you mentioned, like, you do, you're like, okay, 40 days. Not too long, it's like a month and 10 days. Right. Doable. But then once you finally sit, once you finally start and you sit and really think about it, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, I, it's hard. And yeah. I, I think like we said, we have disruptions to our routine. Mm -hmm. It's easy to stop and not keep going. Yeah. Um, and so I think now that's like a nice little segue into you know what we're talking about, which is, uh, what you're sacrificing for Lent because it's supposed to be, you know, a sacrifice. Giving things up is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether or not you choose to take something on. And so yeah. something that we talked about when we were kind of planning for this, um, this video is we really wanted to highlight um, something that I, I saw on uh, Twitter. It was from a, a Catholic speaker named Katie Prejean. And she said that no sacrifice is too small. And I think that that's so wonderful because, you know, we talked about like, I've given up soda in the past for Lent. And, and you know, it seems so like silly, but like for us, because like you said, I mean, we have it for like every retreat, like because we buy like a whole pack, you know, for the next couple weeks we have soda. So we do have it like every day for lunch. Like, so for us, it's a true sacrifice, mm -hmm. especially because like, you know, uh, you guys know retreat work is, is very busy and you get kind of dependent yeah. on that little like caffeine boost, you know? 100%. And so like, even though it is something small and, and it does seem kind of silly, like for us, it is a true sacrifice. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, highlighting that and we, we talked about too, like, you know, my nieces and nephews, they love to give up 
like hot Cheetos or, you know, Takis, like, and, and it seems small, but when it's something that you have every single day, it's truly a sacrifice. So you are, you know, giving that up. And you know, we talked about what Lent signifies, and it's a, a time for reflection and also, um, how did you explain it? It was so beautiful. So, um, it's an invitation to inconvenience. It's an invitation to interruption in your daily life. Right, and when, and when we talk about, you know, things like soda or chips or things like that, that does become part of your everyday routine, it is an interruption. It is. And, and I, sometimes it does feel inconvenient, you know, <laughs> especially like I said, when you're used to that little caffeine boost. And I think that, you know, when it's in those moments where like, oh, like I want a soda so bad that you're thinking like, but I'm doing this for God. I'm doing yeah. this as an invitation. Like he's calling me to reflect on, you know, my journey and, and everything, and specifically during Lent, but also in general, like where you stand, um, you know, yeah. on your faith journey. You know, I just think that when Jesus was so good at it, he was so good at letting go of those worldly possessions to the point where he didn't stop him from achieving his vocation right. and doing what he needed to do. So I think in this invitation to sacrifice in this invitation to interruption we're invited to be more like jesus and to find that connection with him and not only be like jesus when it's most convenient for us i right. think that that's something that's made me reflect on yeah. this past few weeks and i love that and i love i really like uh talking about like inconvenience and, and convenience because you know something that i've always really liked to kind of like rest in is you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think yes. that, you know, God always calls us to certain things or certain experiences, and sometimes they're scary. And I feel like we have talked about that a lot, mm -hmm. is that, you know, sometimes he calls us to things that we don't necessarily feel, you know, ready for. And, that, and, and, and it does feel like sometimes it comes at an inconvenient time or, it's pushing us out of our comfort zone, mm -hmm. so we are uncomfortable. And, and I've always really enjoyed, you know, that that kind of concept. Yeah. Um, and I think Lent is a, a good time for that. So, I agree. Um, yeah. But anything else before we? Um, no, I think. You yeah. So the much. the next thing that we're going to talk about is taking things on. Um, so this is something that I feel like not a lot of people um, talk about or really mm -hmm. know about. And so, yeah, and this, the, it was a concept that was fairly new to us, like, I would say within the last two years, maybe. Yeah, um, sure. And so it's really that kind of going the extra step, you know, or, or like I said, I, sometimes you do one instead of the other. But when you're taking something on, mm -hmm. it's something that's going to help you grow, you know, um, whether it's, you know, just in general or, you know, specifically spiritually. And I feel like you and I, like, choosing to do reading, yeah. we've chosen spiritual books, you know, mm -hmm. like right now, uh, I'm trying to read Becoming an Everyday Mystic, and so it's talking about mysticism within the Catholic Church, yeah. um, and what that means, and being, you know, kind of like that special friend uh, to Jesus, and and you said you chose the 40 Days of Lent? Uh, it's called um, 40, day, 40 Days with God. Okay, so uh, for Lent, you know, yeah. and so, you know, taking, taking these things on, it's something that you're doing to kind of better yourself to further along your, your spiritual formation to, mm -hmm. to kind of push yourself in, in your faith, you know, and, um, and that was certainly our goal, I think, you know, yeah. trying to do that, but also to, to push us to, to add something to our routine, something that's, that's not just, um, you know, binging Netflix or, you know, whatever, so yeah. I, I think that that's something that we were hoping to do, I mean, I, we made it halfway, we did. Uh, hopefully we can both <laughs> make it back up. Yeah. Uh, and, and keep going for the rest of Lent. But I think that brings us into um, maybe one of our final points mm -hmm. is slip-ups are going to happen. Yeah. You know, we are going to have time during Lent. I mean, like we said earlier, 40 days is a long time. Mm -hmm. You're going to have small stretches of time where you're just like, I, I just can't, or I really need that soda, or <laughs> I, I yeah. don't, I want to watch Netflix. I don't feel like reading, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to have those moments uh, where you're just like, I, I can't do it. But I think the important thing, and it's something that I know you have um, like a, a quote and a prayer for, yeah. is that even though these slip-ups are going to happen, 
you just pick it back up again. You pick up where you left off and you keep going and you can't just let that be like, oh, I messed up. Okay, well, try again next year, Lord. Like, <laughs> no. Jesus is, is like, no, dude. Like, we have to keep going and we're going to keep going together, you know? Uh, and I think that's really important. So I agree. <clears throat> yeah. So I have this quote. It's from St. John Paul II. It goes like this. The person who does not choose to love forever will find it very difficult to truly love for even one day. St. John Paul II. So what I really like about this quote and how I tied it into our Lenten journey this season is that it's not convenient to love. It's definitely not easy to love your neighbor. And, you know, in this Lenten journey, we're invited to sacrifice and to leave behind worldly possessions just like Jesus did. And Jesus set out in the world to love. So I think that that's something important that we all have to do in this Lent journey. Definitely. So, awesome. Uh, would you like to close us in prayer? Of course. Yeah. Found this prayer online, and we thought this was a good one. So. Yeah, we both liked it. So. Alright. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, I know how much you love me. It's hard for me to feel it sometimes, but I know your love is always with me. Help me to use your love as a way to persevere in my Lenten intentions. I am weak, but I know with your help I can use these small sacrifices in my life to draw closer to you. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we wish you... Uh well moving forward and we hope that you are doing uh better than we are but if you're in the same boat as us uh solidarity but we are going to keep going and uh hopefully this this season of lent um is a fruitful one for all of you yeah. all right guys so for the end of our video we decided that for ministry minutes we're going to close out with a segment called there's a saint for that so for my friends that are old enough to remember when the iPhone first became a thing, um, everybody was so hyped for the App Store. And if you guys remember, there are commercials. And for my younger friends, you can like YouTube it. I'm sure you can find commercials for it. But there were commercials um, for the App Store. And every single commercial always ended with, there's an app for that. And so we wanted to highlight the fact that there are so many saints in our church with so many interesting patronages and of course there's so many that we know already um, but we also have some more like obscure ones uh, and so we want to highlight that and so um, at the end of every ministry minutes we are going to do a segment called there's a saint, saint for, for that. that we are highlighting today saint valentine uh, saint valentine was born circa 226 um, and there's a little bit of mystery surrounding his uh, actual death date but the general consensus is that he died in 269 and saint valentine has um the typical patronage of of love relationships but uh, a patronage that you guys might not know that he also has is um, the patronage to healing which brings us into our first fun fact about saint valentine so what's so crazy about St. Valentine is that he was actually under, under house arrest under um, Judge Asterius. And, you know, Judge Asterius was questioning about, was questioning religion, really, and St. Valentine pledged the validity of Jesus. And Judge Asterius was like, okay, well, if what you're saying is true, here is my daughter who is blind, cure her, and I will believe you. And St. Valentine actually cured her, and that led to J Judge Asterius' conversion, and he actually freed all of the Christian prisoners. Yeah, which is so crazy. Like, that's yeah. the coolest thing. Um, and that actually did lead to a really close relationship between Judge Asterius, St. Valentine, and Judge Asterius' daughter, um, which brings us to our next in fact, actually, yeah. um, about how they wrote letters to each other. Yeah, so... Judge Asterius' daughter and St. Valentine became really close friends and they wrote a lot of letters to each other and it's, the legend says, you know, that um, at the end of each letter, St. Valentine would write your Valentine and that's where we get your Valentine from. Yeah, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, do you want to do one more fun fact for us? Um, yeah, so the last, I guess another fun fact for you guys is that 
So you can actually go see St. Valentine's skull. It's adorned with flowers and it's at the Basilica of Santa Maria in Rome. So if you want to go check it out, it's there. Yeah, and um, St. Valentine may not have been the only St. Valentine. Um, there was a lot of confusion. Um, there were a, a few other references to other St. Valentines. Um, and because there was so much confusion about which St. Valentine from where, so we actually discontinued liturgical veneration in 1969. So that's why, um, even though we do acknowledge St. Valentine um, and his feast day, there's not a lot of information about St. Valentine. Um, yeah, which is so crazy. And um, his association with love actually started um, with the idea that birds paired together uh, like in mid-February and since he was martyred on February 14th um, they kind of put that like association together and that's also where we get the term the birds and the bees uh, so we do have that um, kind of unofficially on record um, but the actual like idea of giving valentines to each other um, may have came from the letters that he wrote to Joe Mysterious' mm -hmm. daughter, but also was something that was referenced by uh, Chaucer, which uh, was an author, and uh, he wrote that nobles would write uh, poems to their love interests, and that's kind of where we got the idea of exchanging Valentines. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so um, a lot of fun facts for St. Valentine. We hope that in the future we'll uh, pick other saints that are interesting to you guys if there's a saint that you want to know or a saint that you think is particularly interesting and you want to see us um, highlight that in an episode of ministry minutes please comment like down below or send a message on either instagram or facebook and uh, maybe we'll feature your saint on the next one maybe yeah so uh thanks for being here yeah, with no, us for all fun. these fun facts thanks please for sharing these fun facts with us um, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye.